Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. I hope you're all having a pleasant day, and if not, well, maybe this will cheer you up. This, in a three-ship division with the HSF Harakazi, is Austrian YouTuber and Twitch live streamer Atom. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, because I'm not going to call him Dave. <laughs> that, that would be unforgivable. In case you're wondering what the HSF Harakazi is, because it's not something that is, I believe, currently available. Um, the HSF in the name of the ship stands for the anime series, High School Fleet. The ship itself is a variant on the Kagero class of destroyers. I say variant because the Harakazi here in World of Warships is fairly unique, because it has a choice of three different types of gun. By default, you get your standard Japanese 127mm twin gun turrets. Uh, one at the front, and two at the back. And these are your typical Japanese destroyer turrets. Uh, they hit pretty hard with the high explosive shells, but the rate of fire is terrible and the turret traverse would embarrass a battleship. But you can choose to swap those turrets out. And doing so totally transforms the way the ship plays. By far the most popular choice, and that's the choice that Atom has gone for here, is to swap out for the twin-barreled 100mm gun turrets that you see featured on ships like the Akazuki, the Kitakaze and the Hirugamo, and equipping those turrets with their extremely rapid firing and swift traversing guns turns the Harakaze into a pretty ferocious little gunboat that also just happens to be equipped with Kagero torpedoes. The third and final gun turret option, which is definitely the least popular, which I think is a bit of a shame because it's absolutely the most unique, is to equip the Harakaze with three single-barreled 5-inch guns which can only be found on the USS Midway as its secondary dual-purpose anti-aircraft gun turrets. Yes, really. Um, the performance of the guns is pretty good. The problem is you only get three of them. Which probably goes some way to explaining their unpopularity. The turret traverse is good, the rate of fire is good, but it's half the firepower of the 100 or 127mm guns. Which is a shame. I'll tell you what else is a shame. Aiton's just been radared. That will be the enemy Talon, no doubt. Time to tuck into cover. Narrowly avoiding some shots fired at him there. Around the side of this island. Actually, no, he doesn't need to worry anymore. The radar's expired. It's the thing about Russian radar. It does have very, very long range. In the case of the Talon over there, much more range than it actually needed. But it doesn't last very long. Those torpedoes are looking pretty good, though. Let's see what happens. Plenty of targets. No shortage of targets. There's one hit. Is that it? Yep. 10,000 damage on the turpits, apparently. Um, these torpedoes, by the way, have 17,000 maximum damage, but you obviously also have to take into account the target's torpedo protection. Still... 10,000 damage is 10,000 damage. It's better than no damage. Well, anyway, we know the Talon's popped his radar, and he's the only radar cruiser on the enemy team, so ATAM has a couple of minutes, at least, while the radar's on cooldown, to get up to no good. And his torpedoes are ready to go again. Now, the enemy ships down at the south there have already seen his torpedoes coming from around the left-hand side of the island, so he just switches things up a little bit, and pops this set of torpedoes down the right-hand side of the island doesn't give him quite as wide a firing angle, but ships that see torpedoes coming around the sides of islands do tend to move to the other side of the island, so you never know. Let's just wait and see. At the moment, the team are ahead. Uh, this isn't domination, so there's only the two cap circles. Uh, but First Blood has gone to Atom's team. Let's see what happens here. Oh, turpits. Those torpedoes are looking pretty good. It's just the range. They have a 10 kilometer range. And depending on which way the turpits is sailing, he might be safe. And I think he is. Oh, that's a shame. Oh well. And there's the Talon's radar again. That's going to be really annoying. Although it could be a lot worse. I mean, all things considered, Atom's actually gotten away quite lightly so far. Yes, he's been radared twice, but he's always had good, solid cover between himself and anybody 
um, in a position to take advantage of the radar by shooting at him. There is only the one radar cruiser on the enemy team, and even though there's also a carrier, so far at least, the carrier hasn't been bothering him. So the potential when you're in a stealthy destroyer like the HSF Harakaze with a 5.4 kilometer surface detection range fully upgraded, the potential to have your day ruined by radar and aircraft is fairly large. So all things considered, he's gotten away quite lightly so far. Oh, the team have just lost the Queen Elizabeth. And because a battleship like the Queen Elizabeth, even if it's only tier six, is worth more points than a cruiser like the tier seven Shores that the enemy team lost earlier, that's actually put the enemy team ahead on points. On the bright side, Atom's torpedoes are up again. He's flipped back to this side of the island and they're looking pretty good to ruin that Synops day. Remember, each one of these torpedoes will do 17,000 damage minus the target's torpedo damage reduction. And I'm pretty sure that Synop is going to eat two, possibly three. There's one, and it has caused a flood. And he hasn't used the damage control. He's going to take one more. Will it be enough? Yes. Yes, it will. There's Atom's first kill of the day. Unfortunately, all it's really done is equalise the scores because right before he nailed the Synop, the enemy team sank another friendly cruiser. So both teams are on 385 points. No, they're not. They're both on 387 points. <laughs> ah, it was close. What's two points between friends? All right, both teams have the same number of points and they both have two points coming in every three seconds. The overall balance of the match, however, is swinging ever so slightly in favour of the enemy team. As the Talon fires off his radar yet again, surely he's going to be running out of charges sooner rather than later. Um, but yes, the overall balance of the match is swinging slightly in favour of the enemy team. Because while both teams have lost two ships, Atom's team have lost both of their ships over to the west, whereas the enemy team have been spreading the losses around, so they actually hold a, a, something of an advantage, especially now that they've managed to claim a third kill. A Surrey has just been sunk, and all of those kills have happened over in that end of the map, where we pretty much just have a Zara and the friendly carrier getting shot at by four or five enemy ships. So that flank is in the process of collapsing and something needs to be done about it. There are plenty of friendly ships over here who should be able to hold off. Uh, the relatively few number of enemy ships that still remain down to the south there. So Atom's division have decided that they need to get over here and start plugging the gaps. The Cleveland is going to want to try to stay central so he can continue to provide good radar coverage. Uh, but there are no shortage of enemy ships coming this way. That's not good. There's a buy-in. Spotted by aircraft. Well, it was about time the carrier got involved, I suppose. Uh, time to start doing the hippy hippy shake. Atom is, of course, targeted. Anti-aircraft guns opening up. The carrier isn't going for Atom, though. He's going for his division mate, the Monarch. And he's going to get him with at least one of those torpedoes. Luckily, Atom was there to add his not inconsiderable anti-aircraft firepower to that of the Monarch. How are the torpedoes looking on the Bayern? Not good. The Cleveland's getting stuck in as well, but doing so in a position where he can't get caught in a crossfire from the ships to the south. Atom's laying smoke here, and I'm not entirely sure why. It's not going to be any use to the Monarch. A Monarch isn't going to be able to take advantage of a smoke screen with a battleship smoke firing penalties. Atom's certainly not taken advantage of it, and the Cleveland might have been able to. Although with the Talon's radar probably ready to go again very, very soon, sitting in open water inside a smoke screen in front of that lot probably wouldn't have been a good idea, which may be why the Cleveland is declining the opportunity and instead sailing in the other direction. Oh, there have just been a couple of ships sunk. The good news is the Talon has been taken out by the friendly New Mexico, so the enemy team now have no radar. The bad news is that, as well as a Gneiser now that was sunk uh, about a minute ago, the Zara, who was vainly trying to fight off that lot, has also gone down, so the enemy team are now a good 200 points ahead, as well as two kills. And that will be... oh no, they've lost the Monarch, taken out by the Graf Spee's torpedoes. And the Graf Spee is obviously running his Hydro. 
and it's German Hydro, which has an extremely long range, which means this smoke screen is going to be no use whatsoever. So whether Aitan likes it or not, he is now in a gunfight. Of course, the quickest way to shut down the Graf Spee's Hydro is to kill the Graf Spee. And so that's exactly what he does. It cost him a gun turret and a fair amount of health, but he's once again managed to go undetected. The Cleveland, taking advantage of the limited duration left on that smokescreen and running his own hydro just in case, as Atom gets another two sets of torpedoes away against the enemy Bayern, chasing the friendly carrier and threatening to get himself into a flanking position up to the north. Unfortunately, that smokescreen is gone, which is not good news for the Cleveland. Getting shot at by the Bayern's 15-inch guns. Even though the Cleveland is a light cruiser, it does have, I think, 100mm of belt armor, so with careful angling, it can actually be relatively tanky against 15-inch battleship shells. I mean, not invulnerable, of course, but relatively tanky with some careful positioning. How are those torpedoes looking? There's one. Can we get two? Just the one, and no flooding. The carrier, of course. Because why not go for an AA cruiser? <laughs> and now, of course, he's getting focused, not just by the Bayern, but also the enemy carrier, and the Helena, who's just appeared on the horizon. Um, the Cleveland's in a tough spot. Doesn't matter which way he turns, he's going to be given broadside to a battleship's AP. So instead, he's ducking and diving and doing the hippy hippy shake. And Atom, combining his firepower in an effort to finish off at least one of the battleship threats, focusing down that bio. And he's got him. Torpedoes away against the King George V. But that King George and the Helena are also in a division, and they're clearly communicating with each other. Because watch what happens here. You'd think the Helena would continue to focus down the Cleveland because he's about to kill him. But the second Atom gets spotted, the Helena switches fire to him, and the King George V continues shooting at the Cleveland. Between the two of them, they're hoping to knock them both out. Atom saw it coming, he popped his smokescreen. And both he and the Cleveland are continuing to focus down the Helena, and they've got him. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to save the Cleveland because the King George V was continuing to shoot at him and did in fact just sink him. Atom is not going to have eyes on that King George V for much longer because the Cleveland isn't there to spot him while he's inside the smokescreen, which means Atom is going to have to leave the safety of the smokescreen in order to recite the King George V. One torpedo hit, but no kill. This is going to be worth it. It's not going to take many shots to finish him off. Heads back into the smokescreen. Did get spotted. King George V opening up, but it's too little too late, and there's the fifth kill. And all of the fireworks going off tells us that the second wind skill has just activated. This is a talent specific to the Japanese unique commander Isoroko Yamamoto, or Yamamoto Isoroko, depending on what mood you're in. That has given Atom an extremely badly needed heal. Well, that's going to come in extremely handy, because they're outnumbered 3 to 4, and they're 100 points behind. Actually, slightly more than 100 points behind. Atom's only two surviving teammates are a carrier who's in the process of trying to make his escape into the next map by the top right corner, and an Ashitaka who's coming under a torpedo bomber attack from the enemy carrier. And that's, well, it's unfortunate for a number of reasons. He's also getting shot at by the remainder of the enemy team because he's an Ashitaka, and you can't say Ashitaka without saying shit. Let's just say that if you were forced to choose tier 7 premium battleships, the Ashitaka would probably not be at the top of the list. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not particularly good either. It's sort of like a bargain basement budget version of the Amagi. But shortcomings of the ship aside, he definitely needs help. So, torpedoes away and guns out against the Fantasque. I guess that Aiton is hoping here that the Tirpitz isn't secondary spec. <laughs> Oh, the Fantasque has turned to shoot at him. Definitely some shots coming in there from the Turbiter's secondaries, although the dispersion on them appears pretty horrible. I don't think that is a secondary spec Turbits, which is kind of unusual. Most of them are. At the very least, he's managed to distract the enemy team from shooting at the Ashitaka for at least a minute. But it's going to take more than that. The good news is the Fantasque is almost gone. The bad news is they're all continuing to hammer that Ashitaka. 
and he's running his engine boost and that thing is fast look at how far Aitan has to scroll the view over to the left in order to actually be able to hit a fast moving target like that ship but hit him he has there's another kill but let's not bake a cake and celebrate just yet because the Fantastic got torpedoes away he has managed to sink the Ashitaka Aitan was spotted from the air hence the smoke screen and the Tirpitz is closing in just about the only good news in this situation is that the Tirpitz doesn't have Hydro. How quickly can he get this ship turned around and launch some torpedoes? Assisted, it has to be said, by the friendly carrier who... did he actually hit one of those torpedoes? I think he did. Didn't appear to do a huge amount of damage. The Tirpitz was burning, he's just used his damage control. If we can get some floods here, if not sink him outright, the floods might do the job. Can't afford to leave the uh, smoke screen. Not with aircraft overhead. He needs to kill this Tirpitz before he gets proximity spotted. Not enough. Second set of torpedoes. Can't afford to fire the guns now. Tirpitz is within two kilometers. He will see him if he shoots. He's firing blind and is sailing straight into the torpedoes. He's got him. <laughs> And it's two on two. Um, but they're still behind on points. It's going to take another kill. But what can they kill? There's a Dorsetshire around here somewhere. They're not going to get the carrier, surely. There's a Devonshire around here. So there he is. Right. Not long left on the smoke screen. Carrier, blind dropping the smoke screen with torpedoes. They're going to miss. He's got to stack some damage over time on the Devonshire. He is being attacked by the carrier as well. Come on, we need fires. This smoke screen's about to go. He has to move. Torpedoes away. Spotted by aircraft. So he may as well shoot. The Dorsetch is going to be firing at him anyway. There's one fire. There's a double fire. And slips in behind the island. Now, those fires are not ticking. So the Devonshire has used his damage control. So if he can get one flood from what actually the Devonshire's now on such low health that just a torpedo hit will do. Or you could just shoot him. <laughs> that works too. And that's it. They're ahead on points. Now all they have to do is stay alive. Except that's significantly easier said than done uh, when you're in a destroyer on extremely low health and there's an enemy carrier in play. Three and a half thousand health. He'd have to stay alive for the next nearly three minutes. And I really don't think that's an option, because if the carrier kills him, the scores flip and the enemy team wins. So, this is not actually a case of somebody trying to win harder. He's never going to be able to disengage from the carrier, he's too close. And the enemy carrier is able to recycle his squadron so fast that there's just no way Aiton is going to be able to escape undetected. So he almost certainly doesn't want to close in and kill the carrier, but he's going to have to. Otherwise the carrier will kill him, the scores will flip and his team will lose this match. So this is pretty much a case of kill that carrier or lose. These German carriers are fairly good secondaries, don't they? <laughs> probably inside secondary, he is inside secondary range. Uh, luckily, most of those secondaries fire to the sides. Relatively few fire to the front, and that's keeping them alive for at least the next couple of seconds as the torpedoes close in. They are looking pretty good. Are they going to be good enough? Oh, not quite. Second set of torpedoes away. Guns, guns, guns. Come on, you beauty. Come on. And he's got him. <clears throat> I mean, and that brings today's battle to a successful conclusion. Sorry. Got a bit carried away there. Don't know what came over me. That nine kills, not well. That's just vulgar. <laughs> yeah, nine kills. Bloody Austrians! They come over here, take all our kills, <laughs> and of course, uh, is a tier eight premium. So, eight hundred thirty-six thousand credits into the bargain. Yeah, that wasn't bad. That was, that was all right. <laughs> and if you fancy seeing more like that, I can definitely recommend uh, both Atom's Twitch and YouTube channels. Links down below in the video description. Uh, thank you so much for sending that one in. 
extremely well done goes without saying and i hope everybody enjoyed it because that is it for today as always take care stay safe and i'll catch you next time